Now then, we've got a slightly different project here. I don't know whether I've introduced you to our rainwater harvesting system, but it's got several pumps in it. And previously, I've used the old-fashioned Stuart Turner um, 110 volt brush motor pumps or a universal motor in them and they were used in pubs for pumping beer donkeys years ago and they seem to last quite well but we've got the runner transformer and this and that and the other and they eventually do wear and the bearings get very grumbly groany and the brushes wear and the commutators wear and so I picked up some slightly different motors and I'm just going to experiment with them. Uh, for those who maybe have noticed just here the window frames or the window casements they're all together and the next part of that uh, project is to go and fit them in the frames just to make them fit properly make, and uh, cut out for the hinges and then um, put the old casements back in and bring those into the workshop finish the sanding and uh, start the painting anyway enough of that what we've got here I've got several of them I suspect this is a shower pump yeah. and it's got a pump either end obviously one for hot one for cold but they have pressure sensing um, units on the end and I've worked out you can cancel those or you can cut them out and take the various bits out and you can just use these as a straight pump anyway so I've got several of these but then I came across this slightly bigger pump bigger motor single pump but it's got some weird pressure thing on it so um, what I want to do is sometimes if you turn these upside down then the pressure sensing um, system which is obviously works on the well on this one I'm assuming it works on the outlet in there out there and these threads here are the same as the uh, the threads on a washing machine so you can use washing machine pipe fittings to fit to these which is handy because that's what I've used um, on the Stuart Turner motors so it won't be a big deal to transfer this so all I want to do is put some power in this turn it upside down fiddle around with it see if it runs if it just hums then we'll have to investigate further so I've got the safe block here connected it's not plugged in yet so we'll connect that up and we'll switch this on plug it into the mains and it's just humming and then it stops and there's some electronics in here because there's some lights flashing there's an N and a 2 and it's trying again okay so not a lot but it was humming so it was trying to start but couldn't now most of us know what that is so let's remove the top by the way this is a salamander pump and it's uh, well it says ESP 80 CPV whatever that means wow <coughs> there's a fair middling bit of electronics in that yeah I don't like the look of that lot and it's not required for what uh, we're doing but I'll keep it in place and the first thing to do of course is to test that capacitor now let's just have a look at the wiring on it
we're unplugged. Short it out. That is connected to that and that is to there. Okay, internally. So we have a neutral coming in there and a neutral going out to the motor and then that's connected to the brown so that'll be the capacitor phase shift so let's just remove these and it says here 10 microfarad so let's test it so this is a 10 microfarad capacitor and that mark that black there is glue it's not where the uh, capacitor has exploded so let's just test it on the 20 microfarad range and it is duff it's 0.09 so it's one tenth of a microfarad so we need to change it so I found this other capacitor I've obviously tested it in the past and uh, there we go it's only got two spade connectors and it really would be handy if we had uh, capacity with four spade connectors but we can use this one as a proof of concept and then I can dig into the big box up in the loft and see if I can find the right one okay well I've just um, got a bit of solid cord wire there. come out of that one into there so that just transfers the neutral and that is the uh, capacitor start so let's give this a go plugging it in and it runs So why has it stopped? Let's just disconnect it. Probably realise there's no water or something. There it runs. That'll be to do with that sensor. So we need to get rid of that sensor, I'm assuming. wonder what happens if we turn it upside down not a lot if you notice here that is just a piece of pipe so there's obviously a pressure sensor there. So I think for the for the use I'm going to put to it, put it to, I think we can disconnect that lock. It's disconnected and um, We'll just check. There we go. So that's the capacitor shorted out. So now we know that there's nothing wrong with the motor. It was this. So this whole unit has been scrapped because of a four pound capacitor. Now let's have a look at these wires. Oh, 
hopefully we can see here that's the neutral coming in from the mains and it goes off to this lot so we're going to ignore that okay so that is and then that is the neutral that goes into the motor okay that is the capacitor connection and there's a mains live connection there so this live wants to go to there the neutral wants to go to here and also to the capacitor which then goes to there so let's get rid of a few wires first of all right so the the live comes up there through the block and into there the capacitor motor connection is there the neutral comes up to there and I've just tucked that in there for the moment I think the idea would be to remove all of this lot and prevent any leaks in there and then we've got quite a decent motor and quite a large pump we need to pump about I'd say six meters of head and this will do a maximum of 10 meters apparently so um, let's give it a go I think we're all connected and away it goes So that's fine let's just have a look at this other pump so this looks a bit confusing that's the original that's a neutral that's a live and then it goes through all this lot and there and down here are the motor connections that right down the bottom there maybe you can see that's L and that's N so I think if we want to just use this as a motor then if we put neutral and live there it should run but let's just have a look at the capacitor and it looks like a 7 microfarad so obviously the first thing to do there is to test that just to make sure it's something like so here we go, I've taken one of the cables off just to make sure, yeah 5.5, that'd probably be alright, but let's give it a go. Right, so I've got live and neutral there, I'm just going to plug it in, contact, and away it goes. So just because it looks complicated, just dig in there and just think about where the motor wires go. And of course, always test the capacitor. So hopefully we've learned something with that. And uh, those of you who will hark back, oh, three or four years ago, um, I had a problem with the pellet boiler. And that ended up being the capacitor across the motor fan and changing that made a huge difference so now we've got some uh, uh, induction motors for the rainwater system which hopefully will be more efficient not having to run transformers and all sorts of things and maybe quieter as well uh, we can but see but it's interesting to repurpose this stuff that would otherwise be crushed and scrapped. Catch up with you soon.